Hello, uh, how's everyone today? I'm doing a video today that's uh, it's a little different in poker, in the poker world. Uh, it's about how you can uh, use free tools um, to improve yourself at poker. Now, obviously, there's lots of tools that you use, like Flopzilla, PyoSolver, even things like databases, which you should buy if you're trying to be a serious poker player, like Poker Tracker or the Manager. You should definitely buy um, for sure. But one thing that you can definitely do use for free is Equilab. Um, it does have a pro version, but I think it's, it's a very good tool for just like doing quick calculations. Say you want to know what, say you think a guy only ever jams jacks, and he's king in value um, pre flop, and you've got something like. No, no, let's just say you've got Ace King off. Um, it's good for just like understanding your war equity in that spot. Um, of course, it's more complicated than that when you want to work out what you call, what you fold, etc. Um, but it's just good for doing that sort of thing. Um, and I've done plenty of time studying stuff like this for sure. Uh, one of the things I want to look at is something people probably don't do very often. And there's two tools you can there's in tools you've got scenario analyzer and equity trainer. The scenario analyzer um, it's kind of a little bit like things you I don't really use it because I can use PyoSolver to do basically the same thing, but sometimes I might. Um, but equity trainer this is actually quite useful, um, especially if you can't afford PyoSolver um, and what this does, I mean the scenario analyzer, what this does is when you have a board and so let's just uh, give Dylan a range of, I don't know, top 10% of hands, right? Um, and then the board is, and then we've got 10, 9 off and the board flop is like 10, 6, queen. Um, Let's make it a backdoor flush draw for us. Um, what you can do is you can go on the. Um, it tells you your equity against the holding. And then you can analyze the turn cards. And then you can see which turn cards are good for your hand and which are bad and um, versus his range. Um, and you can filter it. Like, um, for example, every. If we take away the club, or sorry, if we just take away everything but a club, we can see our equity is improving a lot, except on jack of clubs, king of clubs, and ace of clubs. It's not improving dramatically, but you know, um, things like that. Um, you can see, like, for example, the worst cards are obviously the ace, the king, the jack. Um, interesting that the jack, the king, and the ace of clubs is actually worse for our hand than blank, like. You know, pairing the board like a six, or like some of these low blanks, like things like this, you can learn. And obviously, our best cards are ones that give us two pair or flush draw. Um, it's just something interesting. Like, even now, would you really think that an ace of clubs is horrible in this, is bad in this situation compared to the seven of diamonds? No, you'd, uh, or like the three of diamonds? No, you'd, you'd take the ace of clubs, wouldn't you? Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a really good tool to use um, if you don't have Flopzilla or PyoSolver or things like that. Um, to just sort of know which hands are good for you, that you can continue on. And then know how much of your range you can continue on. So when he c-bets half pot, I mean you want to be calling him anyway because your equity is 47% um, against his range on a board like this. Uh, and if he c-bets half pot, you need to call you need 33% equity to call, so it's an obvious call. Um, but let's say he just like pots it, then the equity is like you don't have enough equity, but you might have implied odds, um, for example. But yeah, it's, it's just a just an example to show you what, what you think, how you can use it. I don't know if people use this enough in Equilab. Um, I don't think I don't think so. And here's another thing I think is massively underused. And you may have noticed in the background I have this spreadsheet. 
I made that I, since I first started realizing I wanted to try and take poker seriously back in it was November last year when I started playing for real money in January um, I've been using this tool to help myself improve um, and I've been still using it but I haven't used it very lately the last time I used it was I used it once in November um, and it's just it's essentially just like studying what equity, the equity trainer is, it gives you a scenario of um, a predefined range. Now the ranges it picks is picks are generally more for nine max than six max, and it might be, I think they're Cepheus, Cepheus ranges, so they might be an update. But you can select use defined ranges, um, and then so you can actually what you can do is you can put your um, what you think the villain has, and then you can put your defense range from the big blind versus that position in there. Um, and then what all you do is uh, you just start training, and then it will give you a bunch of questions, um, and it tells you what if their range is, uh, and your whole cards. And then you guess your equity, and then it will tell you the result. And I like to, what I'd like to do is I, myself personally, is I like to do 20, 21, 22 questions um, in this scenario and then put in the results at the end and then just sort of observe how I've improved. Because you can see DB versus small blind defense. I actually haven't looked at this since July um, from Equity Trainer. I actually started off pretty well in the first one. Um, and then then as I did it you can see I was like 10%, 7% but then the more I did it it seemed the more I improved um, and then I redid it in July and then on the 29th of July it was like my average difference was down to like under 4% so I was very good at guessing my equity um, I'm going to actually try this today I don't think I'm going to be as good um, I'm going to do uh, Blind versus small blind open rays. And I'm going to start training. Um, one thing you probably want to do first is check out the actual range that it's put in here. Um, so you just have an idea of what your range is, sort of, you can visualize your range and how much percentage of how much percentage small blinds open in. Um, this, now this exercise it can be a little tedious but like we can see that he's basically stealing like every suit of hand. Um, very very yeah he's stealing, he's, he, he likes to steal this guy. What can I say? Um, he's a thief. But he doesn't like to steal these suit connectors. Which is a bit random, but in King Free Off, these are definitely sort of older. Um, what well, is also fixed limit ranges that maybe makes it different. Um, so maybe you want to use a user defined range just so it's a bit more accurate. Um, but I've just, just for the sake of simplicity, I'm just putting in like this. He's probably stealing something like 60 to 65 percent of hands, right. Um, so for the sake of simplicity, we want to um, use this. Of course, we're defending pretty wide as a result of that. Um, so now we have king four off, and the board is ace eight seven. Um, so we have to guess our equity. Um, I'm just going to try and do it as if I'm in real time here. Uh, we know his range is a bunch of like random junk. Don't we just have no nothing. We've got king high here. He does have a6 that we don't have much out against, but he does have a lot of junk. We're out of position. Um, our king high is going to be good quite, I'd say, half the time. I think we're going to have probably in the region of about, I'd say, we also have a backdoor straight draw. I'd say we have around 42% equity, 45% equity, something like that. Maybe maybe a little lower, 39, 38. I think we have enough to call a lot better though with our king four. Let's go 38, see where we are. Okay, we're 
you see see how far off we are and um, six percent um, but this is the thing another trainer is because I didn't think I was this far off my equity and now know that in this sort of spot maybe I should fold my king four off um, into a uh, half pot c bear and then defend it versus a third c bear for example maybe I start calling like king six or king four off with the four of spades probably gives me a little bit more equity stuff like that I kind of like figure that out. Uh, next question. I'm trying to do this in real time. Okay, so we know his range has like a lot of. It basically has all the kings and all the aces. This is something you is good to learn. How much of his range is king? Are kings and aces like? Like that's three hundred eighty combos. That's twenty eight percent. If we think he's open raising sixty five percent, we can determine that. Um, forty percent of his range. Has hit this board, including like ATX and stuff. So we're actually, this hand isn't actually amazing. We are obviously ahead of lots of random junk um, like this, like that. But uh, we're not actually in an amazing spot here. But we do have some outs against his ace X, like apart from his ace kings and whatever ace nines or whatever. We do have the outs. Like if we hit a nine or another eight. We will have out, so we got to think. Um, using the, f we got to think how much, how many outs we have. We have five. We're on the flop, so on average, per out, one out equals four percent equity. Um, as a rough estimate, so we have about twenty percent equity minimum against the king and an ace, and then we're ahead of other parts of his range that are um, like not kings and aces. So I'd say we probably have about forty-five percent equity here. Um, maybe 50%. Let's have a look. Okay, 50%. Makes sense. Yeah, we went for 45. Uh, King 6, same thing really as before. Um, the other one, except the board's different because we now have the overcard to the board if he does hit it with like some random 10 7 suited or something like that. Let's have my T. Um, we also have a back door flush uh, straight draw. Two. Uh, so when it comes to our direct outs, or if he has hit a hand, like if he's got fours, fives, sixes, um, something like that, we uh, we actually do have the uh, free outer. So we do have at least twelve percent equity here. Plus we are behind his. Uh, we're going to be behind his ace highs, but we are going to be ahead of like. All and some of his and his belly king highs, but we are going to be ahead of like a lot of queen highs, jack highs, stuff like that. So it's the same thing. I can go in here if I want to put more detail in. I can go in and just try and work out how many combos of stuff he has. But because I'm trying to do this as a real time exercise, I'm just going to be thinking, yeah, uh, we probably have um, more equity than we had last time, which was 31 percent. Uh, because we have outs against made hands in this time, but we probably don't have a maze. I think it's going to be about 40% here. Let's have a look. Yeah, cool. 10-7. Uh, so here's, okay, we're in straight draw territory now. 10-7. Um, we do have the 9, which will give us an out to the nuts very often. Um, sometimes we'll, we'll get a counterfeit us with a flash, but. So we can effectively say we have at least four outs here against the jack, um, or an overpair, which is not a huge amount of his range either. This is going to miss quite a lot of his range too. Um, we do have at least four outs, so we have at least 16% equity. Plus, if he has an eight, we do have the overcard to the eight. Uh, so we're actually going to be doing okay on this board. We are going to be behind his king highs, queen highs, but even there against like king queen um actually king queen is probably the worst card to be against because our nine is no longer live against king queen but uh, <laughs> against like king five king six stuff like that queen five queen six queen seven so like that we do have or maybe not queen seven we do have the seven as an out too um so i think we're going to be looking at I think we're going to have at least 36% equity here, I would say. Maybe a bit more, maybe a bit less. 
Um, let's go 35%, see what it says. Okay, a bit less, 30%. See, I'm learning. I'm learning 4 5. Ah, here's a board where our equity is just awful. Um, like, oh, well, I won't even like think, try and think. I'm going to try and do these quicker, but yeah, this is a board we just awful. All we have is a backdoor straight draw. And like maybe against some of his A size, King highs, 10 highs, 9 highs, 8 highs, 7 highs, whatever. We can, uh, you know, sometimes turn the best hand, but often we won't be turning a four or five very often, or we're in the four or five. So our equity is going to be really low here. It's going to be the only times we win this pot when he has a queen or a jack is if we like run a run or trips or straight or something. I think we have less than ten percent equity here. I'm going to go nine. Wow. We have more. I guess I thought I wasn't accounting for the fact that his range is super weak because he's small blind. And see, I'm making lots of. I'm learning. I'm learning Jack Five. And this is another board where it's like we backdoor straight. With a straight draw. We don't have a lot else going on other than the straight. The um, the backdoor straight draw. We do here. Ten though. We will. You know, pick up some equity. Jack is live against some of the other hands. So I think we, uh, we're we going to have at least probably about 20%, 22% equity here. Let's go 21, put it in there. 19, okay. Not bad. 6A suits it. Uh, we have another uh, we have an inside straight draw. Um, we also have a backdoor flush draw. Oh, and a backdoor straight flush draw. Wonderful. Uh, so we're going to have at least four outs against the king or ace and against like random non-made hands we're gonna have um the six and the ten as outs sometimes especially the ten is a bit more live here uh, so i think we're probably gonna have and the backdoor flush usually adds about two or three percent equity on average depending on how strong your flush is so i think we're gonna have it's going to be like the other one. I think we're going to have like 30%, 32% maybe. Yeah, cool. We're learning Jack 5 hour. We have the two pair against a super wide range on a very wet board that has a lot of draws. Um, if you're not check raising this flop, by the way, you're playing poker well in this spot. But, but yeah, um, Jack 5, yeah, we're crushing. Um, but he does have, there are parts of his range that do have a lot of equity against us. Uh, pick your hand. It's a hand we want to fast play. Uh, in terms of like how often we win the pot, though, I'm gonna go ahead and say we're gonna be like ahead 70, 82, 84 percent of the time. Um, a lot of his range is just garbage that misses, and the stuff that does hit, like Ace Eight, he only really has a few outs to. Like, so I think we're gonna be like 80. I'm just gonna go like 85 percent and see where we are. Yeah, we're very, very good there. Uh, yeah, this is an interesting board. <laughs> so we're going to be ahead very often, but there are lots of parts of his range that have like dominating flush. So this is a good time where, I, if I wanted to think about how many hands he has that I need to protect against, I would just go and um, like we know he raises up to like queen three, and I think he raises like this much crap. I think. Um, like this, I, I think. I think that's what it was. So, I'm gonna like hit this, um, and we just wanna like sort of uh, spades only, and then just see it's twelve percent of the hands. So we feel think he's open in sixty five percent. This doesn't include the king x. The sorry, the flush draws that beat us. Um, so if we think he's open about sixty five percent or something, then this is. It's like one sixth of his range. Um, so with that in mind, plus the fact that he does have some things like aces, queens, and jacks that are going to improve on us, um, we are going to be ahead here, but we're not going to be crushing like the last board. We're going to have, I would say, probably around seventy-one percent, seventy, maybe sixty-nine percent equity. Let's just go 72, see what happens. Okay, we're absolutely crushing it way more than I thought we were. Um, 
I'm trying to think of why that would be. My logic must be wrong here. Um, I guess I'm just thinking of like, I wasn't thinking about like these hands, 12% of the hands have equity, that they only make a flush. Um, they've only got eight outs. So on average, they only make a flush by the river, you know, 32% of the time. So with that in mind, we're actually not doing that bad, as I thought. This was probably accounting for the fact that these were already made flushes, or they were going to make a flush very often, but if they're only making a flush a third of the time, then yeah, this equity makes a lot more sense. And sometimes I forget these things when I'm playing. So, yeah, there's a... Uh, that's something. Whenever I get something terribly wrong in these spots, I just have to think, why am I wrong? Because that's the most important thing. Like, if you're wrong, you have to ask yourself, well, why am I wrong? What did I miss? And then that's how you improve. Because I've missed some stuff here, for sure. Ten six off. Uh, yeah, this is garbage. Like, there's no, the back door straight is all this hand has. There's an ace on the board with dead to an ace, basically, except for a run around and two pair or something. No f flush draw. We are ahead of some random hands. Um, it's going to be like the other hand. We're going to have like 20% equity, 16%, something like that. Let's go 17, 18%, cool. 7-6, uh, okay, this is a similar to the ace-king-8 hand, um, where we do have... I can't, I'm trying to remember the result of that. Uh, I can't remember it. But we do have like... We're ahead of a lot of his misses, but there's a ton of equity. Everything he has basically has a ton of equity against us. Um, I think which makes this kind of hard um, board to actually be ahead of. So I think we're going to be around 40, 45% equity. I'd say probably about 40, let's go 43. Okay, it's, oh yeah, it's 50 50. I'd have thought like the last one was 50 50, but I would have thought this would be lower just because with. With a six, um, like things like king seven, well maybe not king seven, king eight, king nine, nine eight, jack, um, queen queen ten. They just have so much equity against us that it'd be different. But I guess I didn't account for the fact that we also have some outs too against an ace and a jack that we're not completely dead. So I think that's what I'm not accounting for here um, in this spot. Queen ten. We have a backdoor flush draw, backdoor straight draw, and always adds a little bit of equity to the uh, to the cause. Um, we also have a pair. Now we do know that an ace does make up something like you know fifteen. It makes a decent amount of his range, like fifteen percent of his range, an ace. Um, but we also and he does have stronger queens enough sometimes. But we're going to be ahead here. Still, most of the time. Um, obviously, his King X has some outs against us. Uh, we do have the back door straight. I'm thinking this is a spot where we're going to have around 66% equity, something like that. Yeah, okay, cool. Uh, King 6 6, we have trips. So, yeah, we're going to be crushing this board. We also have a back door flush draw, but that wasn't good enough. We're only we only ever behind um, eight six eight six ace six um, and eight so and there's not a lot of stuff that we need to protect against that you know hits very often so I think we're going to be ahead eighty at least eighty three percent of the time um, I think with our backed off flush I'm going to go ahead I don't know. Women give us 88% equity here. Wow, 91, even more than I thought. Um, insane. But it's just good to know. Yeah, that's the spot where we're finding it very hard to be behind. Queen 5 off now. Um, so this one, we only really have a back door straight draw. We don't really have anything else going on here. Oh, we do have some overcards too. 10x. Um, to, we know that we lose to his king x, we're crushed against his ace highs, we do have some outs. Again, we're looking at six outs against his, uh, it's about 24% equity against 
is ace fives, but then we have to account for the time he has ace queens and ace fives. So maybe we should make that at 23%. But um, still, uh, that's getting a bit complicated. How I'd look at the spot in the actual game, I'd be like, oh, well, I'm ahead of some of the randoms, seven, eight, six, sevens, all of that garbage that he has. Um, I do have some outs against the ten and the four. Uh, so I would say well, I am behind ace, ace highs and king x where I'm struggling. So I'd say on this ball we're going to be performing okay with our back straight draw, but we're not going to be fantastic. I think it's a spot where we're going to have something like 35, 33% equity. That'd be my guess. Let's go 33, 29, okay. Uh, 10 7, back to straight draw. Yeah, this is a pretty garbage board for us, the ace, especially. We only really have the six outs against the random misses. He has his range, we're dead to an ace. Uh, we have some equity against the four and an eight, but not much. Yeah, this is part I'd say we have about 20%, 22. So let's just go for 22. Cool. Hang on the money with that one. 10 8, back door. So top pair, medium size kicker, weak kicker. Backdoor flush draw, 10 high. Um, so this is a board we're going to be ahead of a lot, but he has a lot of stuff in his range to protect against. Um, it's going to have equity against us, good equity. Uh, so we will be... Um, I think like a board like this, I think we're going to be... Yeah, we're going to be good. So I'm, I'm going to go and say 63% of the time. Okay, wow, because the ranges are so wide. Top pair here is just golden. It's just something I should account for the fact that I think if he's got a range like this, he's under the gun, his range is like, you know, this, more like this, and like, has like less than I think we have about this much equity, but because his range just has everything like this in it, like, we just have so much more. That's what I why I think I'm so wrong here. Uh, yeah, next question. I think I'm doing worse than I did when I started a year ago, to be honest. It's okay though, we're learning. Oh god, these boards. Um, okay, these boards <laughs> yeah, can be challenging. Okay, backdoor flush draw, that's bad. We do have a backdoor straight draw that's also unlikely to be hit. Um, he has a lot of 8s, 7s, and 9s. So, yeah, 8s, 7s, and 9s. Uh, Jack X, 6 X, Queen High too, we're behind his ace highs. This is a awful board for us. I would go and say we have less than 20% equity. I'll say we're gonna have 15% equity here. Okay, 20%. So it seems like 20% seems to be like the sort of worst number you have at any time. Like even our four or five suited, only in the back door straight draw still had 19, 18%. So we're never really gonna get be horrible, but we're still gonna have to fold this board with this. Cool. Jack nine suited. Uh, back door flush draw two overs. But we're in against a seven or sixes, fives, fours, eights. Uh, but but behind the ace highs, king highs, queen highs, we are ahead of ten highs. Not a huge amount of them. Um, I think we still have, it's like the other, I think we have more equity than we had last time. I think we're going to have like 25% here. Because uh, we have a backdoor flush draw on two overs, it might even be as high as 30, but I don't think so. We're going to go 27. Let's see where we are. Wow, well, it's a lot higher than I thought, I guess, because the overs and the backdoor straight. It also makes our 9 and jack more alive against queen 10s and king x. That makes it more alive, so yeah. So I think that makes a lot of sense when I think about it. Okay, question 19. It's getting depressing. I think my average difference is going to be like 6% or 7% or something. It's going to be depressing anyway. Queen 10. Um, now we have the uh, straight draw to the nuts. So we have 60 and out, we have an overs to the jack. Um, 60 and out, so we have 16% at least. Uh, not 16, yeah, 16 but at least we have the over, so we're going to have, we have the backdoor flush, 
Um, we're ahead of a lot of random junk. Uh, we, we do have out, live outs against random A7s, A6s and stuff. It's going to be a good board for us. I'd say about 40% minimum. Let's go 40. Yeah, 43. Cool. Uh, final question then. King 7 high. So we saw a similar board to this in one of our first questions. Um, this one I think is better for us than I thought. Because that board I think we had like 30% on. But this one, we have a better kicker too. Um, so I think maybe we'll just go 32% and see where we are. Okay, that was way more equity than I thought. I guess because the... I think the other board had... Oh yeah, we have two overcards, the six and the two. So the other board I think was like... We only had the one overcard. That's why we have so much more equity. I think. Not sure. That was 5.3. I think we need some more practice on this, but I, now I'm just going to put in the results. It's the 11th of December today. We did 20 questions. Our average difference was 5.3. Our biggest difference, although this was depressing, was 15.2, and our smallest was 0 0.1. Um, just do to make sure our formulas are correct. Uh, here, it's 15.1, wasn't it? 15.3, 15.2, well, 15.1 is close enough. Uh, yeah. And then I like to just update these. Um, just so I know how my performing are. These are completely pointless stats. Uh, so that sticks my average difference to 6.12 in this spot. You can see though, um, not as good as I was in July, but generally maintaining the average. But the thing I learned about it was just how much I underestimated my equity on certain textures. Um, when I review these hands, like, but well, how you know good I am at estimating my equity on other textures, like with my things like. My, my king six offs on this this bottom one for example you know my king seven off here if he see bets you no know, half pot i should be calling my king seven here i bet i don't know i wonder how many of you guys will get king seven off in a blind v blind situation with a board like this and the guy you know the guy steals 60 percent how many of you are going to fold um but now that I've seen this, um, but yeah, King 4, oh yeah, the texture on this one was different. It was 8-7, so it was more connected. Plus, this is just more dry. So it just has more draws that have equity against us. That makes more sense. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, what I've learned is you need to float King 7. If your villain's stealing 60% and you have King 7 off and the board's ace high, you need to be cool in the flop and play the turn. That's what I've heard, learned. But, uh, yeah, anyway, this is a slightly different video. I'm not sure if uh, you want to spend half an hour listening to me talk about Equilab. But either way, um, try try it, try this yourself when you want to um, just get your mind into navigating flops and your equity. And especially if you're in the big blind, you want to improve, like. Um, your calling ranges and defending ranges in the big blind on the flop and different textures. Yeah, other than that, peace out.